you can manage your feelings or, or they can manage you. You choose. And so we talk about this basic technique called metacognition that lies at the beginning of building a better life, building a better family, building a better, you know, religious life, friendships, work life, whatever you want. That starts with understanding that that you have feelings all the time. You have feelings that come from the limbic system of your brain, a very ancient system that's that's uh, that takes outside stimuli. It turns them into feelings so that you can react to them appropriately. It's a natural human language across all cultures. You know, uh, uh, fear, sadness, anger, disgust, joy, interest, these basic emotions, we all have them. The problem is if we react according to them, if we live according to our limbic system, then we're just going to kind of take these these stimuli and and walk through life and hope for the best. And so, and so when it comes down to, for example, you know, there's been a lot of divorces in your family, John, a lot of divorces in your family. So basically, well, like, I don't know. I, I guess this is the way that things work in our family. And if I you know, feel unhappy with my wife, I guess we're just going to get divorced. Like, no, learn from it and choose your reaction so you can break the cycle. And the way you do that is with metacognition, putting more space between your limbic system and the prefrontal cortex of your brain where you can actually react on purpose. And this book is full of techniques on how to do that from journaling to meditation to prayer to walking in nature to actually to, 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 to therapy, whatever it happens to be, where you can learn about yourself and you can be the pilot, you can be the CEO. So the, the you know the, so the the workers are not running amok inside your brain. You've got executives <laughs> that are actually running the, the running the operation. Well, when we talk about social media, the emotion that comes up the most is envy. Yeah, yeah, totally. Because for the first time in our lives, we're being confronted with how everyone else on the planet is living. You could pick up your device at any moment and see what people across the world are doing and how much more they have than you. So let's talk about envy in particular. How do we manage that emotion as it's evoked by media? Envy is, a, is an emotion that actually comes through human evolution. And the reason is because you don't know your place in the hierarchy or how you work in your tribe unless you see how other people are acting and you need some sort of an impetus to get better. So envy comes because people want to get better related to others. That's that's a very normal human emotion. The problem is it's deeply maladapted to, to modern life. We're not worried about getting thrown out and walking the frozen tundra alone and dying. You know, we're talking about about how many Instagram followers you have. I mean, it's idiotic. And yet we treat it as if, you know, I don't have enough, I don't have enough buffalo meat for the winter if I don't have enough people <laughs> following me on Twitter or X or whatever the heck it's called at this point. Yeah, I mean, you get it, it's just crazy how the human brain works. So what we have to do is recognize why it exists, understand it, and manage it is the way that we work on that. Now, envy has two kinds. There's two types of envy. There's benign envy and there's malign or malignant or malicious envy. Now, the benign envy is where we envy somebody who actually deserves to have a good thing happen to them. You can envy my, you know, my co-author, Oprah Winfrey, but nobody's going to say she didn't earn it, man. I mean, she kicked butt for decades and created tons of value and is admired because people really know that she's done a good thing and dedicated herself to making lives better for other people. Astronauts, you know, this kind of thing. And then fill in the blank on anybody who didn't earn it, which is the reason when you pick up, you know, these magazines, you know, Us Weekly or something, and it's like the scandal of the week from some person who's famous for being famous. And you're like, yes, right? Because that's malicious envy. And the worst thing in life is malicious envy. It will ruin your life. So the way to deal with it is to laugh at malicious envy on purpose, to say, yeah, 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 forget about it. I am simply not. Let me think a little bit about how crummy that person's life actually is. You know, famous for being famous, I'm sorry. I've met them. You guys have met them. You've had some on your show. Not happy, right? And then think about the people that have benign envy. You, and you think about, about the fact that they're actually admirable and say, I've decided to admire them instead of envying them. Turn your envy into admiration and you win. You win 10 times out of 10 because you're going to try to be more like them, but you're not going to be consumed with this idea that take them down a peg. You know that, And so that's the way to do it. You disregard through reality the people with whom your envy is malicious and you turn your envy into admiration for the people who are on the good side of the ledger and then you start to win. The other way to look at that as well is if you get consumed by the malicious envy, it takes you off of your path and puts you on their path. Yeah. And you cannot beat them if you are on their path because it is their path. And so you have to stay on your own. Now, everything inside of you uh, wants you to compete, wants you to jump in be because that 
envy, if not checked, will consume you, which is why, it, to bring up your point, it is so important to understand that and to be able to chuckle and laugh it off and get back to what you need to be doing for you and your family. 